My name is Gavin Evans, and this is my review of Serenity. And no, not the Matthew McConaughey in a video game movie, but the series finale to Firefly. And this will be a spoil-filled review, so if you haven't seen it, go and watch it, then come back and watch my review because I will be going in depth. Now, I just finished the TV show Firefly a couple of days ago and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fun and had a great cast. And I hold that this movie was the series finale to that TV show and that got me excited to watch it. I heard great things about this movie, which got me even more excited. And after watching it, I can say it's an enjoyable movie but it's a very messy finale to the show. I think a big part of that is because there's these big four plot points in this movie and they just never come together as well as they should have. The first big plot is the entire relationship between Mao and Inara and when this movie begins and we see how Mao is, I love the direction they took his character. He's not the funny lovable guy anymore but he's become hardened, he's a lot more cold and we find out it's because of how his relationship with Anara ended. I love that. And then when she ends up being in danger and she gets involved in the story, I'm like, okay, this is going to be great. We can ha have them reflect on their mistakes. We can maybe have them grow closer together and make a, for a very satisfying ending to their story. But I just feel like we don't get that. As soon as she's introduced, it's like the movie completely forgets about her and she just ends up doing nothing in the background. And then at the end of the movie, Mao's like, we'll drop you off where you were before. Do you want that? And she's like, I don't know. And then that's it. Like, that's the big ending to their story. I just didn't like it. I found it to be very unsatisfying. It had great start up with how they handled the character of Mao and then it just went nowhere. So that was very disappointing. Then we've got the main storyline of Rivel having this programming in her head. And this is a story that I'm glad was a key plot point of this movie, just because if you watched the show, it would have been really weird if we never got any sort of conclusion to the storyline. So I'm glad the movie went in this direction. And Rivel has never been as interesting as she is in this movie. They turn her into a complete badass and Summer Glau really does sell you on it. And I like the whole idea that like, if she hears the word Miranda, she turns into a killing machine. Kind of reminds me of American Ultra and Chuck, even though I think this movie came out before both of them. But still, that's where my mind went and I like that. But I didn't like the entire plot involving her character having that secret in her head that drives her mad or something like that. I thought that was very messy and the entire final act where they have to broadcast that same message out so everyone can know the truth. I just had zero emotional investment in that. It just felt like it came out of nowhere. So I didn't care about the stakes. There was no tension behind it. So none of that really worked for me. But the other stuff we got in this plot really did. And then we've got this assassin played by Shoto Ejifo, who I really like as an actor. And he's good in this movie. I like the way his character's written, how he's an honorable man despite being evil. But he does have good intentions. But I didn't like the way they handled him. It didn't feel like he was present in this movie nearly enough. And like he should have been the big threat, the big force going after the main characters. And he's that in certain moments, but then he feels forgotten in others. So I wish they handled his character a bit better. And the last big plot point are these creatures called Weavers, who I do think are interesting, but just the way they tie into the main plot felt very messy and you don't really buy into it. Like they face them at the very beginning of this movie and then coincidentally it just turns out that the big secret in this movie revolves around them and just that didn't work for me. So all of those plot points had potential and I just feel like the way that they handled each one and the way they came together, it just made the movie feel very unfocused. Like I describe it like this, the best kind of movies is when there's one circle where all the characters, stories and ideas fit nicely within the circle. So if you take a movie like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, you've got Joel Clementine, Elijah Wood, Tom Wilkinson, Kirsten Dunst, and Mark Ruffalo in this circle. And then the whole idea of love and loss and regrets also fit in that circle. And the entire plot of someone getting broken up with so he gets his memory erased of their relationship also fits nicely in that circle. 
So everything in that movie is tight, it walks off of the same ideas, it makes for perfect storytelling. But this movie has the four plot points in completely different circles. So you've got Mao in a nail over here, you've got Rivel over here, the assassin here, the Reavers here, and they try to get them to come together, but they always feel like separate plot points, and it just felt really messy to me. Now, the entire cast does do a really good job. In fact, this might be some of the best performances of the show. You've got Nathan Fillion, who is once again fantastic here. Gina Torres is great. She doesn't have a ton to do, but she's still good. Like I said, Shoto Edgefall is really good. Summer Glau is great. Alan Tudyk, I do really like in this movie, but the way his death happened did not sit right with me. It felt very inconsequential, and I didn't like the way it was handled. Uh, Marina Baccarin, once again, has almost nothing to do. Adam Baldwin, this might be his best performance of the show. I feel like he shows a lot more range in this movie. Then you've also got Jewel State, that doesn't have all too much to do. Sean Mayer, who's once again fine, but I don't feel like he had much to do. And then you've got Ron Glass, who I did enjoy in this movie as well. So you've got this cast, and I love watching their banter. This is the funniest interactions they have with each other. I thought Josh Whedon's writing here between all the characters was just top-notch. But so many of the characters do feel pushed to the background. And especially when this movie has almost nothing to do with Walsh, and he still dies. I didn't like that at all. Like, I understand TV shows that in certain episodes, some characters get more highlighted than others, but it works in that way. But for a movie, I feel like they should have given more attention to everyone because so many of the characters just feel like they add absolutely nothing here. I will say that I do like the fact that this feels like a movie. It's nice to see them in something that looks a bit bigger budget. The visual effects aren't great, but they're perfectly fine, I guess. I didn't like the sound in this movie. I think they tried to do that spacing where in space no one can hear any sound, but it just didn't work for me here. I thought the execution of it was very sloppy. But look, all my problems aside, I still enjoyed this movie. I was entertained, but I feel like this movie had potential to be more. It's fun, but it could have been the perfect series finale if they just balanced all the characters and the plot points a lot better. And they aren't able to do that, but at least we're able to end off on an entertaining note. So I'm going to go ahead and give Serenity a 6 out of 10. Okay, have you seen Serenity? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned for some more videos soon, and Gavin out.